Live from New York, they're the skits that crack us up most. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Saturday Night Live sketches. Number 20, MacGruber. Inspired by MacGyver, MacGruber always has the same setup and payoff. The titular special ops agents got several seconds to defuse a bomb, and the bomb ultimately goes boom. Don't worry, gang. The only bombs we're going to have to watch out for are the sake bombs that we're going to drink after we get out of here. Every time, though, this sketch puts an explosively side-splitting new twist on an old concept. Whether he's teaming up with Nana, he breastfed until he was 12 years old, or endorsing Pepsi. Pepsi, 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 MacGruber! The results are guaranteed to make you laugh yourself silly. I'm under a lot of stress here. I mean, I gotta defuse this bomb. Despite being only one minute long, MacGruber motivated Will Forte and his crew to make a 99-minute feature film that has developed a worthy cult following since its 2010 release. Number 19, Sarah Palin interviews with Katie Couric. And now, part four of Katie Couric's interview with Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. The SNL library has no shortage of hysterical political sketches, and this one wins the election by a landslide, notably becoming NBC's most viewed viral video of the time. I was disheartened by how many of them were foreigners. Katie Couric's real-life interview with the former governor of Alaska was already so ridiculous that the dialogue here practically writes itself. You've got Alaska here, and this right here is water, and then that's up there's Russia. What elevates the skit to comedic gold territory is Tina Fey's pitch-perfect Palin impression, which earned her a Primetime Emmy Award. Healthcare reform and reducing taxes and reining in spending because Barack Obama, you know. <laughs> However, Amy Poehler deserves just as much credit for summing up Cork's thoughts on Palin with one constant deadpan glare. <laughs> Katie, I'd like to use one of my lifelines. <laughs> Number 18, James Brown's Celebrity Hot Tub Party. If a skit's success is measured by its quotability, then this one's a winner. As the lone star in the SNL Dark Ages, Eddie Murphy was given ample opportunity to shine. And shine he did in a gold speedo. What's most impressive about this one is it's basically just Eddie mumble squealing and dancing wildly. We still can't get in a hot tub without picturing James Brown. That's weird, right? Don't go away, we'll be right back with more Hot Tub! Number 17, Colonel Angus. All it takes is a southern accent and a knowing wink for this skit to hit its climax. Why, that must be the Colonel! Colonel Angus! Could it really be, Mama? Written by head writer Tina Fey and brought to life by Rachel Dratch, Amy Poehler, Chris Parnell, and the host to end all SNL hosts, Christopher Walken, Colonel Angus is one sly innuendo after another. FYI, if you don't get the joke, we are not explaining it here. Number 16, Total Bastard Airlines. Sarcastic? Clearly. Obnoxious? Absolutely. Memorable? Oddly, yes. Excuse me, could you tell bye me- Bye-bye. I'm sorry, what? What part didn't you understand? The buh or the bye? Bye-bye. Though this recurring skit only ran a couple of times, it was enough to implant this catchphrase into our brains for good. Sure, these bitter flight attendants were hated in their time, but Total Bastard Airlines has staying power. We bet you've said buh bye at least once, and for that you can thank David Spade and SNL. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Today, peg leg. Today, oh. come on. Number 15, Olympia Cafe. You may know this skit better as. Cheeseburger, 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 four Pepsi, two cheap. Cheeseburger, 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 two Pepsi, one cheap. Starting a trend that would continue for decades, this was one of the first truly quotable and quoted sketches SNL produced. Playing in perfect harmony beside Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi displays his uncanny ability to gibberish his way through a sketch as a Greek restaurateur in a greasy spoon diner. Just don't try to order a Coke. Coco Pepsi, Pepsi. One Pepsi! One Pepsi! Number 14, The Sinatra Group. What is this crap? Sinbad O'Connor. 
In addition to being one of the finest impersonators ever to grace the SNL stage, Phil Hartman was often considered the glue that held his fellow cast members together. You bet I am. His impact especially shows in this illustrious ensemble piece that mocks the declining state of music. You don't need the blue stuff, kid. You got talents. But I don't have any talent. <laughs> You got it, kid. Now you listen to me. The whole panel, from Jan Hooks as Sinead O'Connor to Sting as Billy Idol, gets in on the laughs. Yeah, uh, I forgot the question. It's Hartman's send-up of Frank Sinatra that bonds the dysfunctional group, though, reminding us all that this late comedian could take control of any sketch. Rita Hayworth or Ava Gardner, who would you rather nail? <laughs> I disqualify myself because I've done them both. Number 13, Baba Wawa. Only. I'm Barbara Wawa. It's hard to think of a female cast member who had a greater influence on SNL than Gilda Radner. Really? Renowned for her celebrity impressions and iconic characters, perhaps Radner's most famous contribution to the show was Baba Wawa, a takeoff of Barbara Walters. No, I think you're being very reasonable. Harry Wiesner. Harry Wiesner. <laughs> The first time a comedian parodied a well-known journalist, the queen of comedy dominated the stage with her massive hairdo and one of the funniest speech impediments you'll ever hear. Marlena, what is it like to be a living legend? Whether Wawa's guest was Marlena Dietrich, Godzilla, or someone, Of course, I'm referring to the truly terrific Godzilla. Radner's performance would be consistently pretty terrific. Be sure to drop by next week when our special guest will be Elmer Fudd. Number 12, the Festrunk Brothers, also known as Two Wild and Crazy Guys. Jorge, my brother, there will certainly be a lot of swinging in our bachelor pod tonight. Immigrant brothers from Czechoslovakia, Jortuk and Georg Festrunk, understand women about as well as they understand American culture. Every second of their lives is a wild and crazy soiree, dancing with every step they take. Forget about it! <laughs> Problem is that these oblivious swingers can almost never get get any foxes to join them on the dance floor. After all, there is no other pair of Czech brothers who cruise and swing so successfully in tight slacks. Although their insufferable conduct rarely attracts the ladies, they defiantly rope in the laughs. We are two wild and crazy guys! Even with Dan Aykroyd and Steve Martin in their senior years, these two are still the life of the party. Because we are two wild and crazy! Digital Shorts. Did you ever expect to hear a rap about the Chronicles of Narnia? Us either. But Andy Samberg and his Lonely Island pals know how to take the ordinary and turn it into a digital piece of hilarity for our viewing pleasure. We have to say, when SNL host extraordinaire Justin Timberlake gets in on the action, that's the greatest gift. And my heart is open wide. Chippendales Auditions. Believe it or not, this was one of Chris Farley's first episodes, and already he loomed large as a cast member. In this classic sketch, we see how agile the big guy really is, because he keeps up with the dirty dancer and then some. We still can't decide which is more distracting, Swayze's mullet or Farley's ass crack. Either way, this sketch wormed its way into our hearts. No, Barney, no, 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 Barney, we've, we've made our decision. <laughs> Number nine, Wayne's World. <laughs> By the time we get to the final sketch, most of us are ready to call it a night. Welcome to Wayne's World, and here's your host, Wayne Campbell! Party! Wayne's World went from an idea that hardly anybody believed in to being a staple of SNL, proving that gems are sometimes found in the most unlikely time slots. That was really interesting. Not. Wayne and Garth remain two of the most excellent characters in all of comedy, continuously making us laugh with top ten lists. Number three. Garth's mom. <laughs> Dream sequences. Garth, we're in Madonna's bedroom. And catchphrases. I'm not worthy! I'm not worthy! <laughs> Their antics would inspire two successful movies. Pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? And it's always fun whenever they return to Party On. I see a little silhouette of a man. Got a moose, got a moose, will you do the fandango? Number eight. Sprockets. Welcome to Sprockets, I'm your host, Dita. Originating from a Second City Theatre sketch, Sprockets pokes fun at various German stereotypes with Mike Myers as Dieter. Karl Heinz, you are beautiful and angular. 
only possessing a black turtleneck in his wardrobe and about three facial expressions in his repertoire. This West German is the epitome of every pretentious artist rolled into one. While Dieter generally seems disinterested in what his guests have to say, he will give his monkey the time of day. Before I begin, would you like to touch my monkey? I would be honored. Touch him! Love him! Leave him on abs, Mickey! Still one of the most recognizable characters of Meyer's career, Dieter never fails to make us as happy as a little girl. Number 7. The Delicious Dish with Peach Sweaty Are you, Margaret Jo, going to leave any treats out for Santa this year? Oh, absolutely. I always do. I like to leave Santa some tap water and rice. <laughs> In the off chance you've never seen this sketch, we'll set the mood. It's the holidays, Anna Gosteyer and Molly Shannon are monotonous NPR radio hosts, and joining them is Alec Baldwin as Peach Sweaty, chef and proprietor of Seasons Eatings. Together, they discuss their favorite Christmas nibblies. What follows are enough double entendres to last you until New Year's. We've never been more impressed to see SNLers not break character. My niece would love a sack of sweaty balls. Number six, the Spartan cheerleaders. Will Ferrell and Sherry O'Terry as a couple of cheerleaders. My name is Craig. I did drugs once. I am a Spartan. So check me out. We're laughing already. Really? Okay, me too. All right, come on later. Where cheerleaders are typically the coolest kids in school, Craig and Ariana even make the chess club look badass by comparison. So if you want a victory, well that makes you a wisher. One thing that is for sure, you ain't no Bobby Fischer, Bobby Fischer. Where is he? I don't know, I don't know. They're so peppy and passionate, however, that the two could not care less about what their fellow classmates think. The Spartan cheerleaders will look for any excuse to spread school spirit, be it at a basketball game or a math club competition. I can't believe our differential calculus squad is really kicking some tail! I know! With unlimited energy and chance, we'd gladly check out either of these classic characters. Number 5. Super Basomatic 76 During SNL's inaugural season, writers and cast members were still trying to find their niche. Along comes Dan Aykroyd with one of the strangest, most surreal, and bizarre sketches you ever did see. Wow, that's terrific bass! <laughs> Parodying hyperactive, fast-talking infomercial pitchmen, Aykroyd introduces a tool that will let you use the whole bass with no waste. We complain that he should have drunk the bass himself, but we've got bigger fish to fry. Super Bassomatic 76. It's clean, simple, and after five or ten fish, it gets to be quite a rush. Number four, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. It's one hell of a day in my neighborhood. A hell of a day for a neighbor. Would you be my? During his four years on SNL, Eddie Murphy owned the spotlight with legendary sketches like Bo Wheat Sings. Walking for now. And even more significant, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Won't you be my? Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> the anti version of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, this is one children's program you boys and girls likely never saw on PBS. This is how you answer a door in my neighborhood. <laughs> Nevertheless, Mr. Robinson taught us essential lessons about the darker side of growing up. Not to mention numerous new words. That's our special word for the day, boys and girls. <laughs> he may not be welcome in his own neighborhood, but this disturbingly happy criminal is welcome on our TV screens any day of the week. My wife walked out on me. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Number three, Celebrity Jeopardy. Inexplicably stupid celebs, antagonistic repartees, and ridiculous categories make this recurring sketch perfection. With Will Ferrell leading the charge as Mustachio Jeopardy host Alex Trebek, a revolving cast of characters offers up spot-on impressions of random celebrities. I'm a late bloomer, Alex, and in Double Jeopardy, I'm gonna bloom. <laughs> sure you will. Some show up more than others, with Norm Macdonald's cocky Burt Reynolds and Daryl Hammond's surly Sean Connery squaring off against Trebek on multiple occasions. We couldn't possibly pick a favorite, so we won't even try. But remember, mothers are fair game. This is the sound a doggy makes. <laughs> Mr. Connery. Moo. <laughs> no. Well, that's the sound your mother made last night. <laughs> Number two, more cowbell. I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. <laughs> 
If a skit spawns a catchphrase beloved by an entire generation, it's a hit. Will Ferrell is one of the biggest stars ever to grace the SNL stage, and we've established that Chris Walken is a killer host. Tack on porno stashes, Farrell's tiny shirt, Fallon's incessant giggling, Walken's deadpan dialogue, and, of course, the cowbell itself, and you get fireworks. Or at least a temperature of some kind. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Number 1. Matt Foley, Motivational Speaker. All right, how's everybody? Created by Bob Odenkirk, Matt Foley is the worst motivational speaker money can buy. Now, as your father probably told you, my name is Matt Foley, and I am a motivational speaker. If his thick glasses, tight pants, and greasy hair don't say enough about his inept social skills, the fact that he lives in a van down by the river certainly does. First off, I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. Constantly out of breath, yet somehow restless, Chris Farley was tailor-made to portray this larger-than-life character. You're probably going to find out as you go out there that you're not going to amount to Jack Squat! We had to give this honor to Farley's career-defining role. Oh, Matt's gonna be your shadow! Here's you, here's Matt, there's you, there! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.